125 years of growth, of exploring, of discovering new possibilities, 125 years of innovating, of connecting, of soaring to new heights. At Southern Utah University, students are our number one priority. Everything we do, our programs, professors, services, are here to help you succeed. Impacting the lives of generations, we've put you first for 125 years, and we're just getting started. Hi, I'm Mindy Benson, Interim President of Southern Utah University. For the next year, SUU will commemorate our 125th anniversary, and we've got plenty to celebrate. The sacrifices our founders made to create this university reflects who we are today. We're proud to provide individualized attention to each and every student. Attending SUU is an experience that prepares our students to be tomorrow's leaders of their communities, our state, the nation, and the world. We're proud of who we are and the future of our university. But to fully understand how we got here, it's important to know where we've come from. Many families here in Cedar City went above and beyond to build what is now SUU. There may have been no greater sacrifice than the construction of our initial building, Old Main. Without that building, there would be no SUU. We hope you enjoy this powerful telling of the founding of Southern Utah University what we call Back Up the Mountain. All right, settle down. Thank you for coming to this emergency meeting of the school building board. They want to take our school away. I know you all want to hear about the letter. Principal Benyon brought it from Salt Lake. Why don't I just read what the Utah State Attorney General said? After all our work to get this church building finished for our school? Please, please. The letter addresses two important points. Dear Principal Milton Benyon, the state appropriation of $15,000 for the Branch Normal School cannot be released until good and sufficient title to suitable grounds and building shall be so vested in the state. Now what does that mean? You haven't been paid? What it means is the teachers who have worked for the past three months can't be paid until the state owns the building. But more important is the second point. By law, unless a fully functional building is completed by September 1898, September. the Branch Normal School will be moved elsewhere. September? But we'd have to start in the winter. But we've used everything we had to build this ward hall. Nothing's left. There's lumber at my mill at Mammoth Creek. Heber's mill is 35 miles up the mountain and under five feet of snow. We are going to need men and teams to go to Jensen's Mill. We're asking you to go up the mountain to get that lumber. That's impossible. I'll go. I'll go up the mountain. I just need a few days to get a team and supplies. Thank you, Cornelius. Neil, you gone batty? Who's going with him? Who will build our school? All of you know how much we've given and sacrificed to get here. He pulled his handcart across the plains. Now we need to grow through education with the Branch Normal School. But at what cost? Us farmers, ranchers, and miners. We won't go to this school. We don't need it. The school isn't just for the students. It is for us. I truly believe Cedar we will be happier because of it. We'll be better for it. Education is the key. Who will go? We need good teams and wagons. We need you. The school needs you. The town needs you. I'll go. 
I'll go. I'll go. I'll go too. <laughs> the house mortgage will pay the teacher's salaries until the building is done. But her home, what if the building doesn't get finished? We'll make it. We have to. Old Seton's cabin's just over the ridge. We're halfway. What are you doing? Feedback bridges for the snow. Oh. Give me some of that. What? Only three miles today. It's gonna get harder higher up. Sure we're gonna have enough feet for the horses? They'll get by. I just hope we will. Not as much as we'll need, but we'll take what we can. Let's get it loaded, cut some more, and get down. Get it loaded. The storm's getting worse. Others are done, give out. You know we're in a bad way. When you was a colt that fell off of that cliff into the snow, you knew what to do then. I know you can do it. Blankets. They're huddled up. Thank you much, Rob. Get some sleep. We'll talk about what we're going to do in the morning. Hey, Jim, you know Rebecca and me. We lost three of our four babies. Dead before their first birthday. I lost Becky too, 10 years ago about this time. Well, she was giving birth to little Tommy. You know, I just couldn't imagine not being able to read that boy a story, put him on my lap, turn the pages of a book. And we got folks in town that aren't book learned. You don't need that for farming. But our world is getting bigger, and we need someone who can help us be learned. Now, I respect teachers more than anything in the world. And if my work, my sweat, and all these trips up this mountain can help a teacher, 
help this community. Well, then this all makes sense to me. That's why we gotta get that lumber down. Our world will be a better place for it. What are you doing? We're heading down. We said we'd talk about it. We got no food, frozen clothes, we gotta get down. We can't go back empty handed. Torn for Ren's horse, we'd all be dead. Our school would be dead without that lumber. It's already loaded. We just gotta go back for it. We're going down. Well, go on, you damn tender feet. We'll get on without you. We'll get that lumber out ourselves. I'm sorry, Uncle. I'll break a better trail back to town for you. Let's get to it. We're going back up the mountain. You did it! It's a good start. Bladen, I, I'm glad to see you. I'm sorry. When are you headed back up? As soon as I get a new sled and warmer clothes. I'm with you. You can count on me. <laughs> We're gonna build a school! I'm sorry, Francis. I have no tarpaulin or fabric for the horse blankets. Let me see what I can do. <sighs> I need them by Friday. Boy, you're doing man's work. Got to. Pa's working on school. I got a feeling we're laying the foundation for something bigger than just a building. Well, Ma, we're back to a dirt floor for the shed. You mean every piece of scrap lumber? Oh, hey, take it away, boys. It just means I won't be needing it for a while, ha, 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 Morning, Mrs. Corlett. Ma told me to bring these for the men. Come on inside. Golly! <laughs> Everyone in town is helping. I... Here they're collecting metal. Do you think they could use my whistle? I bet you got that for Christmas, didn't you? But I want to help with the school too. I'll check with your ma. But if you really want to give it to them, I'm sure they could find a use for it. Maybe someday you'll be able to go to the school too. I'd like that. Are you sure about this? I can cook for the building crew fine, just fine without my cupboard. Doing a good job. Sam! 
Are you okay? How are the horses? They're okay. They're just a little shooken up. They just couldn't hold it. Well, let's get you back on the road. It's hard to make bricks in the winter. We only need a quarter million. Keep trying. My sheep will be warm enough even with a loan on them. But in the heating system. Forever in your debt. Thank you, old sorrow. You did it. We all did it. All right, everybody get together. Hold it up here, look up here at me, right here. In the dead of winter of 1898, miners, ranchers, and farmers who could never enroll at the branch campus went back up the mountain, risking their lives and jeopardizing their fortunes. These people who dared greatly inspire. How do we follow? These founders of our community and university should be an inspiration and appeal, summoning us to show that we too have courage and strength, that we too are ready to dare greatly as we go back up the mountain together, as faculty, staff, students, and community members, there will be storms in our path. But we will bring home the lumber. We will grow in a manner that contributes to the quality experience here. We will deliver an even more innovative and relevant education. We will lead students to rates of success that no other public school in our region can match. And finally, our America will be better because of what we do. The character of our founders lives on in every plank, every brick, every student, in each of us. We will never forget their sacrifice, and we must continue to choose to do the hard things, and if necessary, go back up the mountain. Hello, I'm Ryan Paul, a history professor here at Southern Utah University, and I'm speaking with my friend, President Mindy Benson, and we just saw this amazing story about the founding of this institution 125 years ago. And I'm always interested in connections between past and present. So would you link our founding story to our, our future story? Our founding story is part of who we are and it always will be. Those ranchers, miners, and farmers who never would have benefited from the school but new future generations will sacrifice everything. Our community and our region continue to do that for us today. But we also look forward with our modern day founders. There are just as many people, be it community or faculty, staff, students, who continue to propel us forward and who make us who we are today as well. So, as you know, I'm teaching a class this semester on the founding of SUU and, and the institutional history. Yes, and history. it's fantastic. And as we talk about the, the settling of this community, Cedar City and Iron County, it was settled by a group of LDS pioneers t to mine iron. And this educational institution became everything for them. And I often think about what the community would be like without the university. I wonder what you think about that. If you think of the history of Cedar City and the iron mines closing after they brought them so long ago, the Utah Shakespeare Festival was founded when the iron mines closed to help drive the economy. The Larry H. Miller Utah Summer Games was founded when the economy needed a boost. 
uh, we are an economic driver to the tune of millions of dollars a year into Cedar City and into the region. We have people from the region come to school here, return to their communities and make a life there. We have alumni who make their living in Cedar City. We have students who work within the community. We're a big part of the community and the community is part of us. That's an interesting point. And I, I'm very curious about roots, right? Foundings, personal foundings. Many of my students talk about finding themselves at college or here at the university. And I'm interested about, I, I know your family goes deep, deep, deep into the past of Cedar we City. Do. Can you share us a little bit about your personal founding? Of course, we were a part of the founding. We had family ancestors who were part of the founding and sacrificed quite a bit of what they had. Uh, moving forward generations, my father worked on campus and I grew up here as a little kid playing around on campus and ditch sliding actually down the ditch on the side of campus. So the campus was your backyard? It was absolutely my backyard and I grew up here and I learned from the students and I wanted to be one of those students. I actually started working at the Shakespeare Festival when I was 12 as a tart girl selling tarts and whorehound, if you can believe it. And that was formative to who I was and the public relation values that I have. And later, as a student, I actually found who I was at SUU. I loved my classes. They were critical to my success and how I think and how I process. But I found myself outside of the classroom in leadership, in student government, in getting involved in events. That's where I found my passion was at SUU, and I, that all came to life for me. I came back and took my father's job later on and have been here ever since, and I couldn't love it anymore. So one of the things that, that people think about when they think about their college or university experience sure. are campus life, those traditions and things that kind of remember the golden years of their youth. What are some of those things that you remember from your time here and that are still moving forward today? I'm glad that we didn't have cell phones for evidence <laughs> during my time here. We all had fun, but I think that's what is so important to students, to develop and learn who they are. Classroom is critical and finding themselves outside that, whether it's the social norms, whether it's finding their intrinsic values or leadership or testing, uh, but the activities, the student activities, the student life are, are important to who they are. That's where I came up was the student side. And I think of the events that we had or student leaders giving everything they had all night long to produce an, an activity or the 100th anniversary that we celebrated, I was part of that. So many memories and those are what students and alumni still come back to me and say, remember when we did this? Remember when we had that moment? Those are the memories that will last forever. And as we were sitting the other night celebrating the 125th and students were doing the line dance to Boot Scoot and Boogie, and we rolled the cake in, I said, this is a night you will remember all your life. You know, this may come as a shock to you, but the one thing that I remember from my experience back in those days was the fact that I had a full head of hair. That's great. And you went to class, right? I did, okay, I did. I did good. go to class often. So what, what exciting things are happening on campus currently? We've seen the, the back of the mountain and the struggle and, and how they built this, but what are the things that are really inspiring people today? We have a year-long celebration and students are getting into that. I have loved how the faculty has embraced this as part of their curriculum. Your class, for example, learning about the founders and the founding, but the people who are still important to us today, they're telling that history and that's been really amazing to see. We have commencement coming up in a couple of weeks and that's my favorite time of year. That's what we're here for is to graduate those students and send them out into the world. We have Condoleezza Rice as our commencement speaker, Secretary Rice, and that is a remarkable opportunity. Not sure students know who she is, but their parents are really excited. I think we'll have a, a great crowd for that as well. We have a year-long celebration ahead of us. There's so much to be involved in. It's a big year for SUU. So if there's one thing you could say about SUU, what would it be? Oh, I have a tough time with one thing. Can I name a few? Sure. First off, it would be SUU is a special place, and here's why. We're innovative. It's all about the student experience. It's about the growth and the development that the students have here. It's about faculty and staff giving everything they have to make sure that the students have the experience they need to grow and learn and become citizens in, in our world. 
Well, President Benson, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts about the past, present, and future of this great institution. Thank you thank for you. the opportunity. 125 years of growth, of exploring, of discovering new possibilities, 125 years of innovating, of connecting, of soaring to new heights. At Southern Utah University, students are our number one priority. Everything we do, our programs, professors, services, are here to help you succeed. Impacting the lives of generations, we've put you first for 125 years, and we're just getting started. Thank you for joining us this past 30 minutes, and we hope you learned something about our past, the present, and the future of Southern Utah University. If you would like to learn more about us, please visit our website, suu.edu. Thanks for watching. One hundred twenty-five years of growth, of exploring, of discovering new possibilities. One hundred twenty-five years of innovating, of connecting, of soaring to new heights. At Southern Utah University, students are our number one priority. Everything we do, our programs, professors, services, are here to help you succeed. Impacting the lives of generations, we've put you first for one hundred twenty-five years, and we're just getting started.